Township has said one of their concerns is the federal government has a great habit of making promises that it doesn't keep. And they are concerned that this promise that the feds are going to pay for the first three years of Medicaid 100% when they have to borrow money now to keep the federal government going. What is your confidence that the federal government will keep that promise and not leave Missouri and other states hanging with this expanded Medicaid that all of a sudden we have to pay for because they did this? Sure, and I would never take the position of having to defend Congress. Um, especially with their 9% approval rating right now. But I, I think that Governor Jan Brewer of Arizona came up with a very eloquent solution to this, uh, which I think a lot of states should be looking at. She's calling it a circuit breaker in their, in their law that she's going to pass that says that if Congress doesn't live up to these expectations, that it cuts back, that it goes away. And there is nothing saying that we can't do that. And at that point, we know that it was Congress who did it and not the General Assembly in, in Missouri. So I think there are solutions to that. I understand not being able to trust Congress to live up to, the, to those expectations, but I think we can build in those sort of circuit breakers and still protect our hospitals and our rural areas. You talked about the costs involved if we do, if we don't pursue this Medicaid expansion now. What about after those three years? Well, after those three years, it slowly ratchets down. Um, and the final year that OA did, it, there was still a, a net positive. Uh, because it is such a small match and the, the, the economic impact that would come in. The positive in the, in the out years winds up only being about $4 million a year, um, but it, it's also absolutely essential that we, we have these people covered for the entire health care system. We're talking about broken promises. What about the promises that the state of Missouri makes to its citizens to protect them and provide for them when they are in need? And when they can't do it for themselves. They, these folks out here who don't have insurance, don't have the protection, the promises have been broken to them all of their lives. And now here's an opportunity for the state to live up to some of the promises and help them. We got uh, developers and all sorts of folks who talk about tax credit that make promises that give us the money. We do economic development, we create jobs, opportunity for people, and these people will be able to pull themselves up by the bootstraps and take care of themselves. But what about those promises that are broken to the state every year where that money goes into their pockets and it goes for profit? It's not creating the jobs that it needs to create for the, for the people who are poor and need those opportunities. So we're going to talk about broken promises. There's some promises being broken all the way around. Has the state actually made promises to people though that it will? Has the state actually made a promise that it will pay these bills or is that just an expectation based on a promise that's not there? I, I said that our state constitution and the founders of this state and every, everybody who's elected in this hall and raised their hand, they make a moral promise to do everything they can to make sure that the citizens of the state of Missouri can get help, especially when help is out there and it's, and, it's, and it's waiting for them to take it and pull it in and provide it. I think there's a moral promise they make across the board and I think we make it every day in the jobs and in the positions we hold. And that's a promise that is not in writing, but it's a promise that they make to the people every time they get elected. But they also make a promise in writing because the Constitution requires a balanced budget. Uh, isn't there a conflict between that constitutional requirement and what you just said? The, 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 I never said that the conflict is that which promise is the state going to allow to be broken? One, that they give to private developers who promise an economic return so that people would not have to rely on the state or the promise you're talking about. I'm saying that there are people breaking promises to the state every day and, and, and they all impact the budget and we need to step up and do what we need to do for the citizens of this, of this state. It's a moral obligation and it's a promise that they make every day and they should keep. Yes, go ahead. There's been some talk among the Republicans of potentially bringing in some private options to supplement Medicaid. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm anxious to see what those options are. I, I haven't seen what they are yet. Once they come out, I, I think there are some innovative things that could be done. I just want to see them before I comment on them. So you're not saying that the uh, Affordable Care Act solution is necessarily the best one, but right now it's the only one on the table that anybody actually can look at and analyze. 
Well, I, I, I think what they're trying to do is still pull down the, those dollars. So it's going to be, it, it's still going to have to be some sort of Medicaid expansion. But HHS has made that very clear. Um, how they want to do that, I think uh, everyone is anxious to see. And you're more concerned about the ultimate goal of being able to expand the, the program and be able to help more people than it helps them. Well, as, as I said, I'm just the budget guy. I'm sure uh, these folks would uh, be more than happy <laughs> to tell you a few things about uh, the people that it serves. <laughs> Can I get the net to come forward, please? John Von Oxford. Do you have a request? Do you want to sing something? Well, <laughs> Chet, uh, you've dealt with this for years and years through the legislature. Are you at least somewhat heartened by the fact that both Tim Jones and Tom Dempsey have said that they can at least see the economic development portion of this? Uh, are you at least heartened that maybe they're at least talking that way? Uh, yes, I, I think that uh, there's been some improvement in, in the language recently, and, and I appreciate that. I think when we look at the, uh, the whole picture here, uh, that it's a real win for our state. Um, we have job creation, at least 24,000 jobs. Um, by, uh, by ensuring more people, uh, it helps all of us with our health care premiums. And that the, the reason that every year our health insurance costs go up is because of so-called uncompensated care. Uh, well, all care is compensated for some way, and the way it's been compensated for is every year our health premiums have been going up. <coughs> These are folks who are going to the hospital in, in desperate situations. The hospitals can't turn them away. Uh, you know, if they, if they walk in with a heart attack symptoms and they don't have insurance, they're going to be treated. That's, that's part of how our law is now. We have to come up with a way to reasonably make sure that, that we cover those folks who aren't insured and it holds down health costs for all of us, which in the end helps businesses because those businesses that do have health insurance, it's been a real problem for them uh, offering an affordable health plan for their employees. Um, so uh, there are so many reasons to do this when we look at it. Uh, to the point that uh, many of us who sometimes have been knocking heads with each other on other bills are all uh, on the same side of this issue. Uh, I don't always agree with the Missouri Chamber of Commerce, but on this case, we are on the same side of the issue, and I am glad of it. Jeanette, are you happy that you've got the Chamber and the Hospital Association on your side on this? Does that give you any sense of the possibility that maybe this bill will pass? Uh, I am glad that we're all playing on the same team, but I think when we look at the facts in this case, it makes sense that we're all playing on the same team. The hospitals need it because of how the federal law was written in order to make the federal law work. Um, the, uh, the, Supreme, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled on this, uh, so it is the law of the land that's going forward. Missouri needs to not miss its share of, of the funds that we can do some very good things uh, with here in our state. We can uh, both create jobs uh, and, uh, and see that a lot of our neighbors who are hardworking but haven't had access, uh, access to affordable health care can now have it. So it's, it's a real win for those of us like Missouri Association for Social Welfare who care about making sure that everyone has insurance. It's a great win for the hospitals. It's a great win for those who care about creating jobs in our state. It's a win-win-win situation. As a former lawmaker, do you understand where Senator Dempsey and others are coming from, though, with their concerns? that the feds made a promise that they may or may not keep? I, I, uh, I, do, I understand them saying uh, that because the future is always open, right? I mean, whatever happens tomorrow is about the decisions we make in that moment. However, if our federal lawmakers behave responsibly, you know, we always knew here in Missouri when we raised our hand that we do have a, a, a responsibility uh, to, to do things like balance the state budget because of how the Missouri Constitution is. The, the federal lawmakers have, have passed and are implementing a law. It depends on certain things working together in order to, to make it work. If, if Congress, uh, if our federal legislators will actually see themselves as servants of the people and look out for the best interests of our nation, we won't have to worry about that broken promise, will we? So it's, it's, all, it's all up to us as citizens to hold our lawmakers accountable to not break their promises to us. So I don't think there's any reason to assume that the federal government will break its promise because in the end, that's about us as citizens speaking up and not letting that happen. 